Here's what's happening now. The cloud cover has been out most of the day, but sunshine starting to break out. We'll see how long it's going to stick around. Carrie. All right, Ben, also had Ford's $1 billion commitment to Michigan and how it's paving the way for cars of the future. We also have a computer scam alert, how crooks are trying to reach out and steal your money while you're doing business online. But up first, a mysterious car crash in Detroit. A mother and her two children are injured. Sadly, one of them doesn't make it. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at four, it is a heartbreaking family tragedy, and we don't have a lot of answers on exactly how it happened. A six-year-old girl is dead, and her one-year-old brother is in the hospital right now after their mother crashed into a tree on Detroit's east side. Police say the 25-year-old mother was driving on Edmore around four this morning when she lost control and hit the tree head-on. Her little girl was killed on impact while her son is currently in stable condition. The mother is currently in critical. So far, police haven't been able to say why the mother lost control or where the family was headed in the middle of the night. A Detroit father is charged with second degree child abuse after his 10 year old son accidentally shot his 14 year old son. Police say last Monday, 36 year old Kong Ku was out of the house when his sons found a loaded shotgun in the home. While they were playing, the younger boy accidentally shot the 14 year old in the stomach. The teenager remains hospitalized. Today in court, Q was given a $25,000 bond in order to have no contact with his children as this case continues. A Michigan state senator is commenting for the first time on this raid at his Highland Park home. We told you yesterday the FBI and Michigan State Police searched that house and office of State Senator Burt Johnson. The officers took boxes filled with documents, also a computer from his home. Local Force Rod Maloney caught up with a state senator in Lansing. He's the man that Metro Detroit wanted to hear from yesterday. The truth is we're looking to try to understand what it is that they're even investigating. So, um, you know, I'm going to get some lawyers in place. After the feds raided his home and offices, he is now speaking to Local 4. His story on Local 4 News at 6. Well, the Ford Motor Company is spelling out a major commitment to Michigan and to building the cars of the future right here in Metro Detroit. Devin Skillian is in the newsroom with a closer look at Ford's billion dollar investment and exactly where the money will go. Hi, Devin. Hi there, Karen. Uh, we've been following uh, these uh, Ford plans for months, but today the company wrapped them up with a $1 billion bow as it spelled out exactly how and where that money is going to be invested. Ford is going to invest $850 million at the Michigan Assembly plant to make the transition to the Ranger and Bronco. $150 million is going to go into the Romeo engine plant to make engine components for those new models. Now Ford had talked about those plans in the past, but the unexpected news today was a $200 million investment in an advanced data center in Flat Rock. Now, Ford executives say managing data is essential for the development of electrified and autonomous vehicles, which are coming quickly. Vehicles of tomorrow will be connected to the world around them. And that, that connection provides a lot of data. What's going on in the vehicle, what's going on around the vehicle, what the vehicle's doing. And so that provides an opportunity to make better use of technology and data to make the car better, make the vehicle better, but also provide more safety um, solutions, but also help consumers stay connected to the world around them. Real challenge for the uh, vehicles of the future, managing all of that data. And today's announcement means Ford is going to add or retain 130 jobs at the Romeo engine plant, though they did not offer details about the numbers at that Flat Rock data center or at Michigan Assembly. Uh, the, uh, another question Ford executives really haven't answered yet, which a lot of people want to know, and that is what is this new Ford Bronco going to look like? No pictures available yet. Now, the new Ranger pickup is going to go into production uh, late next year, but the Ford Bronco will start, uh, come, or they will start building the Ford Bronco, Karen, rather, in 2020. So we've got a while to wait uh, for our first glimpse at it. We'll keep waiting for some maybe uh, secret glimpses. And, oh, you, you know, know people the, are looking for them. The auto spies are out. There's That's no right. doubt about it. All right. Thank you, Devin. You bet. Time now for our first look at the first forecast, and it's shaping up to be a pretty nice day, Ben. A little bit of cloudy.
Yeah, it hasn't been the brightest uh, so far, but those clouds are starting to break and temperatures are going to inch up just ever so slightly from those numbers that we're at right now. But this is what a late March day would typically feel like. Our average highs are at 51, so we're not far from that. It's 49 right now at Metro. Ann Arbor's at 48, Adrian at 47, and there's a little bit of a north wind out there, just a little cool breeze, but we still have enough daylight left that these numbers may tick up a few more degrees before we actually set our daytime high. Numbers will be falling to around 40 at midnight. Skies continuing to clear out, and it is going to be one of our coldest days really in several, and we'll see how if we can warm up in the seven day forecast coming up in a few minutes. Karen. All right, we'll check back with you in a little bit. Thank you, Ben. First at four, we're tracking stories making headlines all around the world. Let's start in Australia, where a powerful cyclone has slammed into that country's northeastern coast. Cyclone Debbie made landfall today as a category four storm with winds up to 160 miles an hour. The store, storm tore up trees, tore down fences, and knocked out power to thousands. Ben will have a closer look at the cyclone tonight at 5.30. And take a look at this bright red lava flowing down the side of Mount Etna in Italy. A volcano sprang back to life last month. For the most part, this eruption hasn't been too dangerous, although 10 people were injured on March 16th when a volcanic explosion sent stones and rocks flying into the air. Mount Etna is Europe's most active volcano. Both of Michigan's U.S. Senators have announced they will vote against the nomination of Judge Neil Gorsuch to the United States Supreme Court. Democrat Debbie Stabenow says she believes Gorsuch has a record of siding with special interests instead of hardworking Americans. While Senator Gary Peters, also a Democrat, says he's voting no because he thinks Gorsuch is out of step with mainstream American values. The Senate Judiciary Committee will vote on the nomination next Monday before it gets to the full Senate. President Donald Trump has signed an executive order to roll back former President Barack Obama's plan to curb climate change. The order will start a review of the Clean Power Plan. It starts the process of repealing or reviewing a half dozen regulations that put restrictions on fossil fuels. The order also lifts a moratorium on new coal leases on federal lands. Just as President Obama's policies were held back by legal challenges, environmental groups are promising to take the Trump administration to court. And as the president signs the order in Washington, we have local experts right here in Metro Detroit doing the research about climate change. Our Paula Tutman checked with them about what the president's new order means for all of us. There's a scientist here at Oakland University who says he's looking at the data. And what he says indicates that nothing humans are doing is affecting climate change. Yet here at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, there's a scientist who's looking at the exact same data and coming up with an entirely different point of view. In this corner at Oakland University, Dr. Professor Chris Kobus, a fluid thermal scientist in the engineering department who's been studying climate for decades. Every year ice gets packed down to get another layer of ice every winter, right? If you look at the gases that are trapped in that ice as it gets packed down, you can back out what the climate was. In this corner, University of Michigan, Dr. Professor Mark Bartow, director of the Energy Institute, who has been studying climate for decades. Levels of CO2 are essentially the debt we've incurred. And each year that this continues, we're running a deficit and continuing to build up that debt. And the, the carrying cost of that debt is measured not in dollars, but in degrees. Both with diametrically opposed views of climate change and rolling back the clock with the president's executive order. Well, whatever politicians are doing hasn't affected climate change one way or the other. Whatever regulations that the past administration under President Obama put in place was not going to make any difference. And whatever's being repealed by President Trump is not going to make any difference. Trump's casting this in the form of energy independence is nonsense. The U.S. is already about 90 percent energy independent in terms of the advertising that this will bring back the coal industry and create jobs for coal miners. It's really a, a very cruel joke. Coal is not coming back. One believes this is the natural variables of the planet. The other believes this is man-made. Everything that we do globally contributes to the CO2 emission in the atmosphere by about 4 percent which means 96% of emissions into the atmosphere is natural. The oceans are the number one source of CO2 emissions, decaying vegetation, number two, human activities, 4%. Dr. Bartow sees the numbers differently. Emitting from fossil fuels about 
34 gigatons of carbon dioxide a year. That's 34 billion tons. Nearly a half of the amount of CO2 that results from our fossil fuel burning uh, winds up in the atmosphere every year. Both will tell you that the experts cherry pick the data, leaving all of us non-scientists with fruit we may not truly understand and a final outcome few of us may actually live long enough to see. Paula Tutman, Local 4. Still ahead, first at four, a kissing challenge cliffhanger. We showed you the couples locking lips for a big prize yesterday. Well, today, we've got the winners. Also ahead, do you recognize these two world leaders? The outrage over this headline in our trending stories. But first, here's consumer investigator Hank Winchester. Hi, Karen. Thieves working to hack into your computer, the new way they are doing it, and what you should do to protect yourself. That's in my Help Me Hank report. Good strip. Coming up all new on Local 4 News at 5 and 6. New documentary about white boy Rick Wershey has Detroit buzzing leading up to Friday's premiere. Cameras roll capturing the city. The story is called White Boy and is told through interviews with all the major players. The FBI, a big time drug dealer, a hitman, and the media share their knowledge of the incarceration of a teenage police informant turned drug dealer. All right, we look forward to that, Kevin. Thank you. In this Help Me Hank scam alert, you know con artists are always coming up with new ways to steal your money. That's why consumer investigator Hank Winchester is here to help you stay one step ahead. Hank? And Karen, those thieves, they are always working to find a new way to get into your laptop or to hack information out of your phone, stealing your personal information. But there are things you can do to protect yourself. Many of us are constantly connected and quick to click on emails that we receive. Don't let your guard down when it comes to cybersecurity because hackers will take advantage of you. They're trying all sorts of new tricks. Tricks that can pop up even when you're on a legitimate website. One scam making the waves right now, targeting online baking. And all of a sudden there's a pop-up that comes up and asks you for a bunch more information and you just fill it in assuming you're connecting to your bank where you're really connecting to to um, you know, a, a bad actor. It's actually a form of malware, often installed just by clicking on a malicious link. Email is probably the most popular you know, technique. Keep in mind, especially during tax season, the IRS will never email you. And while you may already know not to click on a link from someone you don't know, you should also be leery of clicking an unsubscribe link in an email. That can actually link you to spam. You're better off just deleting it. Or use the spam reporting button within your own email. Try to clean out your email inbox. That's a good idea. Just be careful. Just don't get too click happy. So on your iPad or your home computer, you should install the antivirus software. You do, right? My husband does all your of husband that. Does. What I'll about, have to admit. He's and on your technical. cell phone, your mobile phone, anytime you get updates regarding your apps, right. do you do the update? Yeah. Okay, good. I just did like a half hour ago because I saw the story coming up that reminded will, me. <laughs> that will help uh, make sure that your phone is up to date and add that virus protection into wow. those apps. Very good. All Thank right. you, Hank. Appreciate it. Let's head over to bed. Yeah, Karen, uh, if you had the local forecasters app, it would have told you we're expecting sunshine late today and it's just about on schedule. You can see that clearing line. Uh, advancing from north to south here on our side of the state. And so we're finally clearing out those clouds, at least in our north zone and within the next hour or so, just about everybody should be mostly clear in some of those places that have already seen some sunshine. It's only slightly warmer up here in Alpena, 50 degrees there. 46 in Saginaw and we're at 49 down here in Detroit. And as we told you at the top of the show, there's a chance we could go up just a degree or two uh, as we max out towards the end of today. A couple more hours of daylight left. Winds are calm and the humidity right now at 69%. Pressure is a little bit higher than it was yesterday, but not high enough to keep all those clouds out of here. Uh, that clearing will continue to take place tonight. So we're looking at mainly clear skies through tonight and at least through part of tomorrow. But once we get into the afternoon hours, those clouds are going to come back and eventually that's going to lead to rain chances once we get into Thursday. I still think most of Thursday is going to be dry and there's 
just a slight chance that the onset of that precipitation Thursday could be a few wet snowflakes, but most of it uh, is going to be liquid. And if we do see any of those snowflakes, they're not going to last very long. 34 tonight for the overnight low. And again, we'll be coming clear uh, just within the next couple hours and should stay that way through the nighttime hours tonight. Here's a look at high temperatures tomorrow in our four zone forecast. Again, this is pretty close to average for this time of year, right around 50 degrees here in the city. Get north of eight mile. We're looking at upper 40s there in Warren, Troy, West Bloomfield. You'll be at 48 degrees. A little bit of a, a chill towards the lakes. Temperatures out here towards uh, Lake Erie shoreline, anywhere from 47 here in Luna Pier, 47 in Monroe, and then the further inland you get, uh, those numbers work their way into the low 50s out into Lenawee County. West zone high temperatures tomorrow, anywhere between 48 in Flint and 51 down in Manchester. Ann Arbor, you're max out right at 50. And Lake Huron obviously having an effect too. Uh, in fact, we'll only get to 40 degrees here in Lexington and Port Huron and inland areas of our north zone getting into the mid 40s here in parts of Lapeer County, North Branch 45, Lapeer 46 and Ortonville. You'll go to 47 uh, tomorrow afternoon. Numbers coming down just a little bit on Thursday and again that rain coming in in the second half of the day. For most of us, it's not going to be here until the late afternoon. North zone, you may see a couple of those wet snowflakes on the onset, but it becomes liquid pretty quickly. Rain ends very early on Friday. We'll spend most of the day dry and make it up for last weekend for this weekend. 50s for highs and a decent amount of sunshine both Saturday and Sunday. Karen? All right, thank you, Ben. Still ahead, first at four, internet outrage and charges of sexism. The controversy about this photo and this headline about two very powerful women. Up first, should internet companies be able to sell information about you without your permission? We're tracking an important vote in Congress. And we have this programming note. Our Live in the D crew hits prime time with a special program looking at food, hot spots, and music all in the Motor City, including a visit from one of Motown's Four Tops. Live in the D after hours, Thursday at 8, and we'll be right back. In today's trending stories, Congress is about to take a vote that could affect your privacy on the Internet. The House is considering a Republican plan to roll back a new privacy rule. That rule required Internet providers to get your permission to sell information about your browsing habits. But the Senate voted to overturn the rule. It is expected to pass the House, and the president is likely to sign the bill. Trending also on this Tuesday afternoon. We have a story for iPhone users that's trending at clickondetroit.com. Apple has released its iOS 10.3, and you probably want to download that update as soon as possible. The Lookout, an internet blog, says the update includes a patch for a Safari security bug that could stop users from using the browser. The update also features a Find My AirPods feature and an update to Maps. So do that as soon as you can. Facebook is rolling out new features that could mean some big trouble for Snapchat. The Facebook mobile app will now offer special effects like masks and frames and interactive filters that users can apply to photos and videos. Since Facebook was unable to buy Snapchat is 2013, it has spent imitating some of its competitors' best features. The Facebook update is available today. And by the way, Snapchat stock fell when the news broke. So masks on Snap, you get stickers coming for the iPhone. Yeah, there's All lots kinds of, of stuff. extra stuff. Did, are you going to do the sticker thing or no? I'm trying to download the software you, update for my phone. Right I did now. that earlier today. It takes a little bit. Uh, finally, critics are outraged by this photo right here. Lots of people talking about the headline about British Prime Minister and Theresa, Theresa May and Scottish First Minister Nicola Sturgeon. The two women were meaning to talk about Brexit and the impact on their two nations, but the biggest headline on the Daily Mail says, never mind Brexit, who won legs it? Politicians, commentators, and Twitter all pounced, calling the headline sexist. The paper is calling the story a lighthearted sidebar, along with the serious news. Hmm. Do not agree with that one. Still ahead, a big finish for the kissing challenge. How long did one couple have to lock lips? And guess what? After all that kissing, they're giving one of the new cars to someone else. The story is next. But first, take a look at what I'm working on for tonight's 11. I was just born that way. Born with a hand difference, not only is Ryan achieving, but her family is changing attitudes. I wanted to create what I needed those first days, those first hours um, when my daughter was born. A campaign to educate and empower, gaining global attention. And it all started in a home in Oakland County. 
The Lucky Finn Project, tonight at 11. Our client was... Finally, first of four, yesterday we showed you the start of the Kissing for Kias competition going on over in Clinton Township. And today, after kissing for nearly 24 hours straight, four people still standing and still kissing, so their names went into a drawing to get the winner. Renan Prince and Ann Martin. <laughs> Of course they had a kiss when they found out they won. <laughs> they had to touch lips for 50 minutes at a time with short breaks. The couple won two new Kias. They said they planned to give one to their daughter in college and keep the other for themselves. Those people who didn't win. My I heart mean, breaks for them. Can you imagine? Oh, and then your name goes in a hat. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for First and Four. Inside Edition is next.